All right, guys, number three in my series on organic naming, we have alcohols. These are carbon chains, single, double, or triple bonds, I don't care, with OH attached to it. Here's an OH, there's an OH, here's a couple OHs. That, when the OH is the most interesting bit on the molecule, the molecule itself becomes an alcohol. You still have to find the longest carbon chain, you still have to name it just as you would any other molecule. But, you add OL to the end, and you have to tell us where the all or OH group is in order, I mean, this OH could have been anywhere. Could have been on the first one, second one, third one, whatever. You gotta tell us where the OH is, because they're different molecules either way. Here's what I mean. Let's try some naming right now with these molecules. So, you know the drill. Find the longest carbon chain and use the proper prefix. One, two, three, four, five carbons long means this is a pentane. Now, I said ane because it's all single bonds along the carbon chain. It's actually a pentane. We have an OH group though. On carbon number one, two, yeah, carbon two. If we'd have numbered these carbons from the other direction, it would have been carbon four. We want the lowest number. We call this pentan to all. Notice pentane had the E removed. This is just one of those things that we do when we're sticking something onto the end. It's a five carbon chain, all single bonds, and on carbon number two, there's an OH group. Great, that was pretty easy. Let's try it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons makes this a hept. Now, the most interesting bit of this molecule is the OH, so it's the thing that needs the lowest number. So we're gonna start numbering from this direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, it's, oh man, we've got a double bond. So hept, and the double bond starts at carbon five. Hept five ene. And we have an alcohol, or OH group, on carbon three. All. Hept 5-ene 3-all means we have a 7-carbon chain with a double bond starting at carbon 5 and an OH group on carbon 3. Now, I may you may get angry with me because the, the 5 could have been 2 and the OH could have been 5 if we'd have numbered from the other direction, and those numbers add up to a lower number, but that doesn't matter. What matters is that the most interesting bit, and there's rules for precedence here, but the OH is definitely the most important bit here. That gets the lowest number possible, no matter what any of the other numbers are. So, this is it. Good. Let's try this one. Longest carbon chain is one, two, three, four long. This is a but, and it's all single bonds, so it's butan but there are two OH groups, one here and one here, one on carbon two and one on carbon three. So we need to stick two and three in here, and we actually call it a diol, because there are two alcohol groups. Butan 2,3-diol. Pretty sweet. Should we practice going the other way? I'll give you some names, you help me draw them. I know you will because you guys are bosses among kings. Butan, one all. Four carbon chain, all single bonds. One, two, three, four. And on the first carbon, we have an OH group. I could have just as easily stuck that on the other end. Now this is carbon one, it doesn't matter. This is butan, one all. Piece of cake, son. Pentan, two all. Five carbon chain, one, two, three, four, five. And on the second carbon, I have my OH group. Nice, done, that's it. And finally, two methyl propan to all, because you can have substituents. Let's start here. That's our prefix, three carbon chain. One, two, three. I have, it's all single bonds, and on the second carbon, I have an OH group. Cool. But also on the second carbon, I have a methyl group, an extra CH3. This is 2-methyl propan 
to all. Pretty sweet. Now the reason I've given you these three examples is because I want to show you one thing. Take this OH. Which carbon is that OH connected to? This one. How many carbons is that connected to? It's connected to one other carbon. That makes this a primary alcohol. When the carbon that the OH is attached to is only attached to one other carbon, it's a primary alcohol. This OH is connected to this carbon, and it's connected to one, two other carbons. We call it a secondary alcohol. And this OH is connected to this carbon, which is connected to one, two, three other carbons. We call it tertiary. Now, that has huge implications on the reactivity, which we'll get to in another video. For now, I just want you to be comfortable with the fact that this is called a primary alcohol, this is called a secondary alcohol, and this is called a tertiary alcohol. You can't have any more than tertiary, because OH, if OH is connected to it, the carbon can only make three other bonds anyways. So, that's where we max it. Okay, so that's basic naming of alcohols. The last thing I want to point out to you guys are some of the properties. Now, alcohols are much more interesting than alkanes because they have an OH at the end. That electronegative oxygen makes the molecule way more polar. More polar means it's more soluble in water, and it also means you have stronger intermolecular forces. Now, the effect of this, the one electronegative oxygen makes a huge difference, or it makes a huge difference where that O is. If it's at the very end of a small molecule, it has a huge effect on the polarity of the whole molecule. I mean, that oxygen only has to pull some electrons away from these three carbons. But when you get into longer molecules, that O becomes less and less of a big deal. It's like having a house and turning on a light versus having a skyscraper and turning on the light. That one light really doesn't matter. So, the OH makes a has more effect on the polarity for smaller molecules, and it has more of an effect if it's at the end of the molecule. This O has more of an effect on the polarity of this molecule than the one that's in the center does. So, of these molecules, this one is the most polar. It's probably the most soluble in water. This one's probably next polar because it's still small, but it is more centered. So it's less polar than this one. And this one's probably eh, middling polar. It might even dissolve in both water and some nonpolar solvent like hexane because there's a, a nonpolar end here and a polar end here. So uh, you never know. The last thing I want to point out is that alcohols have significantly stronger intermolecular forces than their alkanes. If you compared this molecule to one, two, three, four, five, six regular hexane, this is going to have a higher boiling point, higher melting point, more solubility in water because it has hydrogen bonding and it's more polar. Note, the hydrogen bonding is a big factor in A, the polarity, but B, the reason why the intermolecular forces are so strong. In any case, take these three rules of thumb with you when you're talking about the properties of alcohols and don't forget how to name them. I'd love for you to remember that this is a primary, secondary, and tertiary alcohol later because that's going to play a huge role when you do chemical reactions. Anyways, best of luck.